Hey guys, this is Joe Drake. And I'm Josh Gangaware with the Axiom Fitness Academy and here to talk to you guys about myofascial release and foam rolling. So importance of it as you guys continue to get exposed and, and learn more about the NASM OPT model and understanding movement mechanics, understanding compensations, people who have overactive and underactive muscles, you guys will continue to understand the importance of, of myofascial release and foam rolling, right? As we try to get people better range of motion, not only getting them prepped for training sessions, but especially when we come to find out what areas of their body might be a little bit more overactive or tight. So like Josh, I don't know if you have any areas of your body that you know are pretty tight. Yeah, my calves are pretty tight. Yeah, and I'm very much the same way. So we can get a lot of benefit from focusing on some of those tissues first with even just a little bit of basic foam rolling. We're going to show you guys today and then as you guys go further into the course we'll go through and kind of show you guys some more advanced techniques for getting that same myofascial release and foam rolling so uh, myofascial release foam rolling what are we trying to achieve Josh what are we really doing what we're trying to do is break up some of the adhesions or knots that are in those muscle fibers so that way that muscle can function properly we get a little bit more blood flow going into those muscles which like Joe mentioned before helps with some range of motion and also helps with some recovery yeah, I always think about it. Best way someone ever explained to me is if we go about just stretching a muscle, right? We want to get length there, but we it's like a rope with a knot in it, right? You can keep pulling that rope, but you're not going to get rid of that knot. Right, exactly. So, nice thing is, guys, we can get uh, initial range of motion increases without having to do, you know, additional static stretching. You know, so and a lot of research out there on how long should I stretch before I work out? Well, this is a great way to get some of that flexibility, mobility, and blood flow going without having to just do static stretching, all right? So uh, when you guys do, and we're gonna go through and show you guys kind of a full body, simple uh, foam rolling technique, but just before we do too, just different types of rollers that are out there, you guys, a lot of it has to do with the density of that roller. So the one that Josh is on is, uh, is a pretty inexpensive one, $12 on power systems, pretty common one you'll find in gyms. And I think for a lot of people, a good one to start on because it's not too Absolutely. unforgiving. Absolutely, especially if you do have those super, super tight muscles already, if you're gonna go right into the really hard foam rollers, <laughs> it tends to be pretty obnoxious. So starting with the soft one is probably the best way to go about it. And just like anything, great things can be overdone, right? So we don't wanna cause damage to the tissues either. But as you go further along, you'll find other rollers that either A, have some ridges that allow you to kind of get into certain areas better, um, or maybe just have some better stiffness. I know for me, there's certain parts I need to use something harder than that. So as we go further along, we'll show you guys things with the cross balls and soft balls. But for right now, we're gonna start out. I'm gonna have Josh just get into a position to start rolling out his calves. Right? and we'll continue to talk about it. So easiest way to get started is to make sure that whenever you do roll with the roller, you can put a certain amount of weight on top of your body. So right now, Josh has one of his feet on the ground and the other one on top, which is great, great way to start. So he's gonna just continue, he's gonna lift his hips up and just slightly and slowly roll back and forth. So if you think about it, guys, think about it like a deep tissue massage. They're not flying through, they're really taking your time. And if Josh finds a spot that gives him a little bit of pain or issue, he's just gonna kind of sit on that, maybe even roll back and forth a little bit to try to relieve that knot for about 30 seconds, you know? And most times you'll feel it, right? You'll almost feel a little bit of a release. So, and again, so really what areas of the body should we roll? You could roll the full body. My biggest focus is focusing on the areas that have additional tightness or that are more overactive. That's where you're gonna get the biggest benefit. So. Josh, if, uh, if you wanted to put more weight onto that leg, what could you do? All right, so if that's not enough with just that single leg on top of there, you wanna add a little bit more resistance to it, all you're gonna do is take my opposite leg, cross over top of it, then you can add or adjust some pressures just based on how hard you push into that top leg. Yeah, so it's just gonna add some additional weight. So start with that one as you guys are just getting into it, especially as you're teaching a client, you know, but as they go, you know, or they have generally more muscle tissue, then they might need a little bit more weight to get in there, so that's a great way to do it. Another nice one with the calf is if he just kind of sat there, now sometimes it's hard to do without any, any help or anyone else, but he could put that other leg on top, and he could even just go through some ankle circles, and that's gonna be a great way to kind of get out some of those knots. So it's kind of the same general technique. We're gonna go through the rest of the body, but start out running with the direction of that muscle. So the calf's gonna run for, you know, primarily up and down, it has some different angles. He can kind of get on the sides, but general idea, you know, spend 30 seconds to a minute on that body part, and then move on from there, all right? So Josh is gonna go ahead and roll himself further down into the hamstring. Right, so as you go through, he's just kind of nice and slowly going back and forth. Same idea, finding areas of the body that may be a little overactive, so a little different than just tight. You know, you've got some, some neural activity that's helping that muscle stay contracted, and we're just trying to relax some of that. So you can see Josh is kind of rolling the inside and outside of that leg. Hamstrings just don't live on the back side of the leg. You've got that inner thigh, outer thigh, 
Exactly. We come from side to side through that whole thing because you'll notice too when you do this yourself that maybe right on the back side of that muscle you don't really feel much but if you go from one side to the other there might be a little bit of tightness or some of those knots on one side. Yeah, so definitely spending time talking to your clients when you're teaching them the first time and for you guys really exploring this so you have an understanding of what it feels like because that's the only way you're really going to be able to explain it to a client. So from Josh there too, he's going to roll himself now almost kind of right up on top of, uh, you know, top of his butt cheek and you guys will find there's that area right where your hamstring meets the glutes that oftentimes is kind of a, a problem area. A lot yeah. of times is a yeah. problem area. And uh, we've got a lot of muscle attachments. You can see Josh already did it naturally. He's kind of at a little bit of an angle. Since the glutes just don't run straight up and down, they run at this oblique angle. He's kind of rotated over, so he's rolling up and down the side of that glute and just kind of getting into that area. So if he wants a little bit more, not for everybody, he can open that up, yeah, by bringing that leg on top. So that little rotation of the hip just allows us to get in a little bit different access as he rolls back and forth. So I know for me, this tends to be a problem area. You know, for many of your clients, this is gonna be a, a good one as well. So good, so what Josh is gonna do now, he's gonna go ahead and roll over onto, uh, onto his front side and we're gonna go right into the hip flexor area, right? So as you guys get there too, you guys will see, you can start either way as we roll up or down, but he's starting right in the top of that hip crease. And that's one of the reasons I like the shorter rollers. You do have longer ones, but that way he can keep his other leg off the roller and just slow little roll up and down in that area, right where our, our psoas comes up over the top of the hip. So another nice one here as well is if he finds a spot that's giving him a little bit of pain, Josh can kind of stay right there. And then he can actually just flex and extend the, the knee itself. And that's gonna give him almost a little bit of lengthening and shortening on the front side of that body. Another great way to kind of get in there. Good, so he'll work his way all the way up and down, maybe going a little bit onto his IT band out to the outside. Same thing coming onto the front of the quad. And just like we talked about the hamstrings, remembering that we're very three-dimensional, you've got muscles on all sides. So it might take a little bit of play time and manipulating where your body's at, which is gonna be a challenge for some of your newer clients as well as some of your heavier clients because it's gonna be really tough. Um, but for you guys to get some experience playing with it, it's gonna give you a lot more confidence. So once we've spent some time there as well, we did a little on the calf, we did hamstrings, glutes, we did some of the quads. We're gonna go just basically into kind of this uh, thoracic spine, mid back upper back area so josh is going to lay onto the ground he's not going to put the roller right in his low back because that can be challenging and put a little extra stress in that same area so he's going to start about mid back butt's going to be on the ground to start he's going to go hands right around his ears and bring those elbows together and this kind of opens up your shoulder blades and gives you better access in there and then he's just going to lift his hips up and just slowly roll up and down All right there we go a lot of clients working at desks, general posture for most of us, thoracic spine tends to be a big problem area as you guys keep going throughout the course. So this is a great one to get some experience with. And if he wants a little bit more range of motion too, he can go butt to the ground, and then he's just gonna round up over that roller, right, to give us a little bit more thoracic spine range of motion. So what he can do is he can do that and then just move maybe one vertebra, just a small little change. And if he wants more too, he can extend those arms up and out overhead. So this is just for those who do have more. And good, nice job. How you feeling, Josh? Fantastic. Better already. <laughs> so of course you guys would go through, do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the body, you know, and this would be a, a very simple, as you guys get used to it, very simple five to six minutes before your workout or before you go into your dynamic warmups, doing this first. You know, when it comes to clients, as you guys further understand overhead assessments, your overhead squat, your single leg squat, and we start to understand what parts of the body are overactive, underactive, then you guys will better you know, be able to use this as a tool to help your clients move better, to better get them ready for their training sessions, and overall you know, help with their, uh, their, their recovery. All right? So appreciate you guys staying attentive, uh, foam rolling, a lot more we can do. This is a great basic routine that you can really get started with until we get into some of the more advanced stuff. And uh, you guys uh, appreciate Josh being our model, and. Uh, Great for me. So we'll, we'll see perfect. you guys soon.